Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Hi, who are you? Fine. Fine, okay, good. Okay, welcome um, again to one of classes of English Corporativo. So we're gonna be, um, well, if you remember yesterday, we're uh, working on some exercises, mostly um, to practice our vocabulary, to practice our pronunciation, and also to practice our writing. Um, well, today we're going to focus on something uh, a little bit different because we're gonna be working, we're going to advance in, in the topics that we have to develop here in the platform of English Corporative. If you remember where there are a lot of topics that we need to cover in order to get the diploma. If you remember, there are like um, five sections that we must complete and also uh, we need to get or gather um, the 80% um, of all the courses in order to, to success, okay? Um, let's start uh, now. Um, I want to show you well, uh, my screen. Um, if you remember, um, we had been working. Uh, give me just one moment. I need to set up some things here. Okay, here. We had been working um, on the topic that is relative uh, clauses of time. That was the last topic that we we discussed. Okay, this one, right? So, um, and there we have two different parts, part one and part two. And um, after that, well, we have an exercise. If you remember, this is a, a little bit the same. It's just joint um, or, or match um, the, the sentences, the dependent sentence and independent sentences according to the ones that we have there, or to the context that we have there. So um, after that topic, we're gonna move on to um, the next one. Um, and for this one, we have a lesson objective. And the lesson objective, it says, in this class, you will listen to an audio about a carnival. Uh, this will help you develop skills in listening for a specific information, okay? So um, we're going to be uh, wanna be working on this activity. We're going to listen the audio first, and then, um, as you know, we're gonna answer each of the questions here. Um, that's the the well the aim of of this activity. Let's pay attention to the audio. Uh, give me just one moment. I'm gonna play it here. Page fifty two. Can you uh, can you hear the audio? So it's, I don't know if I'm sharing the audio or not. Yes? Yes, okay, so let's start. Pay attention. Page 52, exercise five, listening. Carnival time, part A. Mike has just returned from Brazil. Listen to him talk about carnival. What did he enjoy most about it? Isn't that music fantastic? It's from a samba CD that I got when I was in Rio for Carnival. Wow, Carnival in Rio is really something. It's a party that lasts for four whole days. It's held in late February or early March, but you need to book a hotel room way in advance because hotels fill up really quickly. Carnival is celebrated all over Brazil, but the most famous party is in Rio. The whole city is decorated with colored lights and streamers. It's really beautiful. Everyone is very friendly, especially to visitors from other countries. The best part about Carnival is the big parade. The costumes are unbelievable. People work on them for months. It's really fantastic to watch. Everyone dances the samba in the streets. I'd really recommend you go to Rio for Carnival if you ever have the chance. Okay. Page 52, exercise five, part B. Listen again and answer these questions. Isn't that music fantastic? It's from a samba CD that I got when I was in Rio for Carnival. Wow, 
Carnival in Rio is really something. It's a party that lasts for four whole days. It's held in late February or early March, but you need to book a hotel room way in advance because hotels fill up really quickly. Carnival is celebrated all over Brazil, but the most famous party is in Rio. The whole city is decorated with colored lights and streamers. It's really beautiful. Everyone is very friendly, especially to visitors from other countries. The best part about Carnival is the big parade. The costumes are unbelievable. People work on them for months. It's really fantastic to watch. Everyone dances the samba in the streets. I'd really recommend you go to Rio for Carnival if you ever have the chance. Okay, um, then we have the audio. So uh, what we have to do, I will be asking you one by one um, these questions that are just for, uh, you're going to tell me what is a carnival, also you're going to tell me how long does it last, when is it, what is the samba, okay? So, um, Saray, Jansi Saray, what is a carnival? Saray, are you there? Okay, guess she's not here. Uh, Fernando, what is a carnival? Can you hear me? Si me escuchan? Uh, yes, teacher, I, I listen. Be, uh, sorry, because I have a bad ear on her. Oh, okay. Can repeat, the, yes. can repeat uh, the question. Of course, I will repeat the question, sir. I was asking you um, about what is a carnival. We are working on this exercise. Yeah, just let me share my screen uh, here. Okay. Uh, we have uh, a, a listen this audio. Uh, now we are going to answer what is a carnival. What is a carnival? The carnival is a, a special a special party with the with the neighborhoods and how do you say el pueblo? Okay, um, we can say community. It's okay if you say it like that. For our community. So, um. Um, in, in, where, where do you live, sir? Where do you live? Uh, I live in Apopa City. Apopa. Okay. Yes. I, I guess in Apopa there is a carnival, right? Yes? Okay. Uh, yes. What, what is that carnival? Uh... The carnival. The carnival is in. Uh, in a popa. No, January, February, December, May. I don't know when. I'm asking you when. Uh, I don't. I don't remember the special day because I never. I never assist on you oh. carnival. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's the reason why you don't know when when this carnival is. Okay, do not worry. Do not worry. Um, well, let me try with someone else. Um, Andrea, you there? Yes. Andre? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, where do you live? First, where do you live? Zacatecoluca. So, um, I guess in Zacatecoluca there is like a specific or a, a main event, a, a main uh, carnival. Uh, do you know the date when it happened? Actually, no. Yeah. I know nothing yeah. about it. You're from Zacatecoluca, but you don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. don't worry. 
Don't worry, don't worry. Um, let's try with someone else. Let me see. I guess someone must. Uh, it's supposed that someone could know the the date. Uh, let's see, Sylvia. Sylvia, where are you? Sylvia, where uh, are you? Good evening. Ah, good evening. No, ¿Qué dijo? Porque no le escuché. Um, where are you? Ah. Where do you live? Yeah. I mean. I live in Aguachapán. Aguachapán. Ah, okay. Um, I, I guess, uh, probably, <laughs> please tell me yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, probably you know um, the date of the carnival. You know the date of the carnival? Is in December, January, February, I don't know, May? I don't know, teacher. You don't know too. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, um, let, let me ask you something else. Um, do you know the thing that they, they used to celebrate? Es que desconozco qué es el carnaval, no sé qué es eso. Como el carnaval no. es like, uh, la, la fiesta del pueblo, la, este, como la, ¿cómo se le dice popularmente? Un, un carnaval, un, sí, un, no sé. <ríe> <ríe> la fiesta, es como, como la fiesta que celebran en todos los pueblos, hay una, como una fecha específica en la que realmente realizan este, ese evento. Por ejemplo, ah, cuando andan eh, las ruedas. Correcto, sí, cuando ese es un carnaval, o sea, cuando, cuando llegan las ruedas, cuando, cuando hacen el, los, los famosos desfiles de correo, eh, uh -huh. que celebran pues este a, a X Santo, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Eso es un carnaval. ¿Sí conoce la fecha usted? <risa> sí. Sí, ¿cuándo? ¿Qué, ¿En qué fecha es? Okay. What's what's the date? But you have to tell me in English because I I want you to practice in in English. So mm -hmm. okay, it's um, the eight in December. On oh, December. Okay, good. Uh, what date? They have a specific date. Uh, date. No date. Date. I I mean. Uh, first, second, third, fourth. What is so? Eight. Oh, uh, eight. <laughs> uh, oh, I, thought, I thought you were asking me something else. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, December eight. So that's what you mean, right? December eight. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. And what they used to do um on the carnival? Do they have a parade? You know what is a parade? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> parade is like, uh, it's kind of similar to, uh, in Spanish, el desfile de correo. So it's a parade. Ese sí no sé cuándo es. Okay. But they used to do something like that, right? Es que? They, they used to do something like that. Yes, no. ¿Qué es lo que hacen este en, en el desfile? O, o qué es lo, lo típico del desfile? Can you describe that? ¿Puedes escribirlo? Mm. No. <laughs> no. Okay, no se preocupen. So, don't worry. Well, don't worry. We're going to move to uh, the next uh, activity that we have to solve. No worry. I was just trying to uh, practice uh, a little bit some words with you um, that from the vocabulary that uh, you listen here in this audio track, um, but do not worry. There are a lot of people that doesn't know like the specific date and, and probably, I am one of the, those people because even I don't know, I'm from uh, Osuluran, but um, well, I used to live in, in, in Erewiki, but I don't know the dates too. Um, <laughs> of the parade, even the carnival, because uh, I guess what I remember is that there are like just two different carnivals, but I don't, I don't know what is the main one. Okay, 
do not worry about that. So we're going to move to the next lesson objective, um, the next, the next uh, I mean, topic. And in this lesson objective, it says, in these sessions, you will listen and practice a conversation about wedding, cost wedding costumes. Um, and also we're gonna be discussing about the very clauses of time and that will be introduced. So let's move on to this conversation. Please pay attention. Hi, listen to the following conversation and find out how people in Japan celebrate their weddings. Pay attention to what they do before and after a ceremony. Listen and practice. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So, what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner, and after the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. And the guests give money to the bride and groom. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What did the bride and groom give each guest? I'm curious. What did you and your husband give everyone? Well, sugar is a symbol of happiness in Japan. So we gave each guest a ceramic box filled with sweets. What a nice custom. It sounds like it was a wonderful day. Oh, it really was. Okay, there we have. This is like um, ceremony. Customs from um, Japan. They used to celebrate a wedding like that. So let's see. Um, the, the, okay, let me ask uh, to Harrison. Harrison, I, I don't know. Do you feel good today to participate? Yes, no? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, well, just let me ask you. Um, does, in this conversation, uh, during this conversation, uh, do you find something interesting for you? Something that you can say, oh, probably this, this doesn't happen here in El Salvador. So do you know, can you see um, a difference? Or something that uh, capture your attention about how they celebrate wedding? Sorry, teacher, I have a problem with the audio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh you have problems. Um, okay, okay. Do not worry. Let, let, let's try with someone else. Sandra, can you hear me? Sandra? Hi, Sandra. Bien, este, estamos viendo ahorita esta conversación. No sé si la logró escuchar este, completa usted. Um, hay como yes. ciertas cosas eh, que, bueno, eh, a mí me llaman la atención eh, sobre cómo los japoneses celebran este, las fiestas de los, la, las, las bodas. ¿Sí? Eh, hay ciertos aspectos pues, que, que, que llaman la atención. ¿Encontró usted alguno interesante o, o algo que le haya, le haya llamado la atención eh, sobre la forma en la que ellos celebran estas bodas? Sí, se escucha. La, lo escuché todo el, el audio y todo, pero la imagen no se alcanzaba a leer bien, entonces no lo comprendí ahorita que lo... Ah, lo bien. ¿Les parece si colocamos el audio una vez más? Luego vemos a, eh, a ver si, si hay algo que, que nos llame la atención. Por favor. Va, está bien. Vamos a hacer eso entonces. Vamos a regresar un poco y prestemos atención. Hi, listen to the following conversation and find out how people in Japan celebrate their weddings. Pay attention to what they do before and after a ceremony. 
Listen and practice. Your wedding pictures are really beautiful, Emiko. Thank you. Those pictures were taken right after the ceremony. Where was the ceremony? At a shrine. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Were there a lot of people there? Well, usually only family members and close friends go to the ceremony. But afterward, we had a reception with family and friends. So, what are receptions like in Japan? There's a big dinner, and after the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. It sounds like fun. It really is. And then, before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests get presents? Yes. And the guests give money to the bride and groom. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What did the bride and groom give each guest? I'm curious. What did you and your husband give everyone? Well, sugar is a symbol of happiness in Japan. So we gave each guest a ceramic box filled with sweets. What a nice custom. It sounds like it was a wonderful day. Oh, it really was. Okay. There you have. Now, questions. Family um, and friends. Can you identify what's the difference between uh, weddings from El Salvador and weddings from Japan? Hay algo que sea diferente entre una ceremonia de, de boda, eh, entre lo que celebran los japoneses y lo que celebran este, los salvadoreños. ¿Hay alguna diferencia que les haya llamado la atención? ¿O algo que este, ustedes pues, probablemente no, no, no sabían que hacían en Japón? A ver, voluntarios, voluntarias. Mi. Ok, prosigue. Adelante. Eh, eh, the four of the sugar is the representation or representation, <laughs> como te digo, is the, is the symbol of the happiness. Oh, yes, that, that, that's true. Okay. So, uh, and that's something uh, that we, well, that, that's part of something is that uh, when I was listening to this conversation, say, oh, okay, they used to give a present to the guest. Um, es como, como al revés. Este, los, um, los invitados, los guests, este, reciben obsequios de parte de los, eh, de los, del novio y de la novia, ¿sí? Eh, entonces, uh, si vemos como, la, comparamos las dos culturas, ¿verdad? La, la, nuestra cultura con la cultura de ellos es como lo, lo opuesto, ¿sí? En lugar de los invitados darle este, obsequios a los, a los novios, los novios le hacen obsequios a eh, los invitados, ¿ok? Esa es una pequeña diferencia. ¿Qué más les llamó la atención de la conversación? Me teacher, I uh, hear the in Japan only invite to fr friends, good friends, and family. Yes. And in here we invite a uh, family, family of the family, friends. It's <laughs> true. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. That's happened. Yeah, that's happened. happened. So. <laughs> it's true. They they are like uh, there there is like a close ceremony in, in Japan. It's like uh, okay. This is my family. This is your family. These are our friends. Uh, okay, we're going to invite just two these people. In El Salvador, it's a little bit different because, as you say, they invite the family of the family. <laughs> okay, so the, at the end, it's a lot of people in, in, in the ceremony. And uh, that's uh, a big difference here. With, with If we compare to, um, two cultures here, there in, in Japan and here in El Salvador, Okay, what else? Do, do you find something else?
teacher, ¿lo puedo decir en español? <laughs> no, because we have to practice in English. Try to say it in English. Uh, Try. Okay. Try. In Japan, the wedding is a big dinner. Okay, good. Yes, they used to celebrate. Uh, puede ser. Yes. Durante el día. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, here in El Salvador, is, it doesn't matter. It could be a breakfast, even uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So it doesn't matter. But in Japan, they used to celebrate the weddings in the afternoon. Um, and they used to offer dinner. You know what is... Um, a, let me just read this word free free a uh, freeze you know what is that yes no I guess it is not possible to watch it like uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna be ready if I do this. No, no funciona. Quiero quiero ver una palabra que está por aquí que me llama la atención. Uh, um, no, no, no logro ver. Déjeme un segundo. Voy a reproducir el audio. Pan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. That's interesting. Shrine. Okay, I, I, I know what the word is now. You know what is a shrine? Do you know what is a shrine? Have you ever listened to this? Just take a look. I'm going to show you here in, in, in the video uh, with my webcam. Pay attention. Um, I'm going to stop here so that way you can see. Have you ever seen this? Yes. So that's a shrine, as uh, she said. Do you know what is a shrine? No, uh, pero alguna es vez como, es como un templo de ellos o algo así de. Eh, un shrine es, es un portal eh, que ellos, pues, es característico de Japón. Si ustedes lo observan, bueno, voy a, voy a ampliar un poco. No, no le presten atención este, al templo que la está al fondo. Como monjes. Ajá. Sí, no, pero no le presten atención este, al, al templo que está al fondo, sino este, al portal que aparece ah, ahí. ¿Sí? Ok. Ese es un, un shrine, como le dicen ellos. Se deletrea S H R I N E S. Bien, aquí, hay, aquí está otro ejemplo. So, the, those are shrines. Uh, so, they used to celebrate the weddings there. Look. So, something like that. Um, let me show you probably. Ah, veamos una, una, quiero buscar una. Teacher, este, una pero al traducirlo dice que es un santuario. Sí, pero este hace referencia al portal de ese santuario. Es como, digamos, ¿cómo le llamamos aquí? Como la fachada. Exacto. Para la celebración. Sí. Vamos Hola. a ver, les quiero mostrar. Bueno, ¿Cómo adornar ah, como la entrada? Quizás. Exactamente. Ellos, vaya, eh, generalmente esto se ve bastante. Les, les quiero mostrar algo, algo por acá. Tengo un segundito. Aquí en El Salvador se adorna con vejigas y se ponen. <risa> sí, no, ellos tienen una forma bien peculiar este, de, de celebrar. Incluso. Los vestuarios. Quiero ver si puedo compartir. Bueno, quiero ver si puedo mostrarles. 
¿Saben qué? Les voy a enviar una, una imagen a WhatsApp para que lo puedan apreciar este, de, de mejor forma. Vamos a ver dónde está el grupo. Aquí está. Se los voy a compartir. No. No se descargó. Ahora sí. Ahí está. Vean, ese es como, como este, uno de los, de los portales que ellos utilizan para, para los eventos. Presten atención a la pareja. Eh, la pareja tiene este, como una, un vestuario bien peculiar. ¿Ya lo observaron? Ok. Ellos son este, una, una pareja de novios que, están, pues, que hicieron probablemente su, su boda. Entonces, ellos utilizan como ese tipo de, de, de vestimenta. Esa es, esa es la cultura. Aquí en, en El Salvador, parte, casi todo, toda América se puede decir, um, lo usual pues, es lo que se adoptó, ¿verdad? Uh, utilizar un vestido de novia blanco, este, el novio pues vestido de traje, eh, algo pues por el estilo o, o un poco similar a eso, ¿sí? Ahora, en Japón, eh, la parte de, de Asia, pues ellos tienen como ciertas costumbres totalmente diferentes a las que probablemente... Se ve, que, se ve que es una falda, ¿verdad? Como una falda es como, la que está usando. Exactamente, él. sí, exactamente. Es como, como no, no tiene su nombre, no, no, no me sé el nombre exactamente de, de ese tipo de trajes, pero... Eh, kimono, se kimono se llama. Kimono, kimono. ah, excelente, bien. Usted, usted conoce este... Ese tipo de vestimentas, kimono. Ah, interesante, mire. Muy bien. Bien, esos son detalles. There are some, some details about how they celebrate weddings and how we celebrate weddings. Like, uh, you know, that could be like a, a, a big difference uh, regarding to, to those aspects. So um, we're gonna stop here with this activity and we're gonna move on to the next one. Um, we wanna see, because if you remember here, well, well, we're gonna be working on verbal clauses. So we're going to move on to the lesson of the 3.9. You wanna see something like this here in, in, in the video. Um, in here. Okay. Pay attention to this video. Then we're going to extend uh, the information. We want to share some extra to um, pay attention. Okay, you can see. Okay, perfect. There we have. Pronunciation, stress and rhythm. Part A, listen and practice. Notice how stressed words and syllables occur with a regular rhythm. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. Hello everyone, now that you have listened to the previous sentences, try to give the right stress and rhythm to the following ones. Then, play the audio program to check on your pronunciation. Listen to the stress and rhythm in these sentences. Then, practice them. After the ceremony, there's a reception with family and friends. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests usually give money to the bride and groom. Okay, uh, good. So there, there we have. I'm um, to check on your pronunciation. Uh, Syllables. Okay, look at this. Um, uh, we, we're going to be working on stress and rhythm before going to the next topic. Um, it says, uh, when people get married in Japan, they sometimes uh, have the ceremony at a shrine. So, um, if we have the stress, I remember that I explain, I've been explaining what um, what is a stress and how we use it in English too. Well, I remember that we, were, we have been uh, working on some phrases 
also some words, and we have been identifying the stress on those phrases and on those uh, words too. So today, we wanna be working on sentences. We're going to identify what are the words that are stressed. What is the stress in each of the words here, um, at least the ones that we have um, in this sentence. Uh, vamos a identificar un poco, este, de, mm, como ustedes saben, ¿verdad? Yo ya lo expliqué este, en su momento. No existe una forma de identificar dónde nosotros vamos a dar la mayor fuerza de voz a X palabra. Sin embargo, pues, con la práctica, a medida de la práctica, nosotros lo podemos aprender. Eh, a identificarlo, no con un símbolo, no como se hace en español, que en, en español nosotros utilizamos este, una... La famosa tilde, ¿verdad? Y con eso identificamos, ah, esta, esta palabra, la mayor fuerza de voz, la, la obtiene en esta sílaba. En inglés no hay ninguna simbología para identificar como la mayor fuerza de voz de las palabras. Eh, la acentuación de las palabras no, no existe. Sin embargo, pues, eh, de cierta forma nosotros lo podemos identificar agregándole este simbología imaginaria. En este caso ellos han utilizado como círculos. Ahora, eh, es muy importante que cuando nosotros estamos aprendiendo inglés, sepamos eh, pronunciar correctamente las palabras. Eh, pa, llámese, pues, eh, frases acentuadas, oraciones acentuadas, eh, sílabas acentadas dentro de X palabra, frase u or oración. Aquí tenemos nosotros una oración. Y en todas ellas, en, en la mayoría de las palabras, se ha identificado dónde se encuentra la mayor fuerza de voz en las sílabas. Eso es lo que vamos a hacer ahorita. La oración dice, When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. People, ¿dónde tienen la mayor fuerza de voz? ¿En la primera o en la segunda sílaba? The first. first. The first one, right? So the first one, the same happened with Mary, but it's not the same with Japan, okay? Japan, so the, the, the stress is going to be at the end of the word. Um, something similar happened to the first one, like uh, sometimes um, this is like, this is like, uh, you know, a, a, syllab a word with a, two different syllables, like some and times, in there, we have, we're going to find uh, the stress at, at the first syllable. Even though that we can see that if we come to the light in Spanish, there are like more than, uh, more than uh, two syllables, but it, we, we, we're not going to focus here because this is, this is uh, and I would switch to Spanish in order to explain this to you. Usualmente, pues, en, en, en español es bastante sencillo identificar una sílaba. Una sílaba está compuesta generalmente por una consonante y una vocal. Eh, o incluso pueden ser este, vocales mismas. Um, las, las sílabas. Sin embargo, en inglés es un poquito complicado. ¿Por qué se nos complica? Porque nosotros no vamos a contar las sílabas como consonante vocal, sino que las vamos a contar eh, de acuerdo a la pronunciación. Si yo, por ejemplo, utilizo la palabra sometimes, sometimes tiene únicamente dos sílabas. Visualmente tiene más, pero eh, al escuchar su pronunciación, nosotros vamos a encontrar únicamente dos sílabas. Eh, lo mismo pasa con el siguiente verbo. Si ustedes observan, es have. Have es una sola sílaba, a pesar de que tiene este, de, eh, consonante vocal, consonante vocal, ¿sí? ¿Por qué lo vemos nosotros así? Bueno, porque nosotros nuestra lengua nativa es, es español y en español se cuenta de esa manera. Eh, en inglés, no. En inglés, nosotros nos vamos a ir por el lado de la pronunciación. Um, la siguiente palabra es ceremony. Okay. Ceremony. ¿Cuántas sílabas tiene? ¿Tiene? Ceremony, four, right? So the, we're going to give like the stress in the first word in the first word because that's the way that is uh, that this word is pronounced. Ceremony, okay? In rhyme, uh, as you see, 
and there is like uh, two different you know, shrines. Uh, there we're going to find the stress in this war. Um, let's stop here. Let me just move on to the next activity. Oh, you, you're going to have at the end, I guess it is here. At the end, you're going to have these three different uh, sentences. But uh, you're not going to work on this right now, but you have to work on it later in order to post um, the stress of each of the word uh, here. So when I see all you work on it. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, now we're going to be working on the adverbial clauses. Want to see how does it work? Uh, it says, uh, by the end of this class, you will be exposed to adverbial clauses of time, what they are in their use. So this is, this is what we are going to do right now. So, let, let's move on to this video. Adverbial clause of time. What is an adverb? Do you know what is an adverb? First, we're going to define uh, the adverbs. Do you know what is an adverb? I guess I have some, some here I have some, um, so flashcards, <laughs> I use this for an activity, but, but I guess it uh, can be helpful for you. Okay, hice esta, esta es flashcard para el su momento para, no, no recuerdo para qué, eh, pero no, me van a servir ahorita. Um, what is an answer? Take a look here. I'm going to stop uh, sharing because I, I want to explain you first what is an adverb. You know what is an adverb? Like here, here. Okay, there we have. What is an adverb? Can you identify that? See? ¿Sí? Bye. Then explicarles algo. Eh, los adverbios son palabras que nosotros utilizamos para modificar eh, verbos, para modificar adjetivos y para modificar otros adverbios, ¿sí? Verbos, adjetivos y otros adverbios. Bien, ¿por qué los modifica? ¿Por qué utilizamos nosotros este, los adverbios para modificar este tipo de, de palabras? ¿Saben por qué? No, teacher. No. Vaya, eh, dentro de los adverbios existen como eh, unas cuantas categorías, entre ellas los famosos, eh, los adverbs of manners, los adverbios de manera. Eh, los adverbs of manner nos dicen a nosotros o, o, o nos muestran a nosotros el cómo de X este, acción, el cómo de X adjetivo, eh, del verbo en sí. Déjenme mostrarles una imagen, quiero ampliar esto. Para que luego, luego veamos nosotros. Mm, aquí está. Un segundo, solo quiero enviárselas ahorita al grupo de WhatsApp. Aquí está. Vean el grupo de WhatsApp. Bueno, les decía, eh, ahorita eh, enfocémonos en los adverbios of manner, porque tenemos diferentes tipos de adverbios. Tenemos los eh, adverbios de tiempo, adverbios de lugar, este etcétera, etcétera. Ahorita nos enfocamos en los adverbios de, 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 de manera. 
It is an adverb of manner is an adverb such as strongly or slowly that describe how and in what way the action of the verb is carried out. Eh, básicamente nos dice que un adverbio de manera eh, es una palabra en sí que describe el cómo o de qué manera una acción este, es, es, es ejecutada. Los adverbios de manera son bien sencillos de identificarlos. ¿Por qué? Porque la mayoría de ellos terminan en L I. Y esto pues, simplemente, si, si nosotros tomamos como un ejemplo un adjetivo y lo convertimos en, en adverbio de manera, en, en adverse of manner, uh, podemos decir quick. ¿Sí? Si ya sabemos que un adverbio, un adverb of manner termina en L I o L Y, So instead of say it quick as an adjective, as an adverb, we're gonna say quickly, okay? So in Spanish are like, the, the equivalent in Spanish are like the words that uh, end in ente, see? Quickly means, uh, quick, I mean, significa uh, rápido en español, correcto? Ahora, si nosotros queremos utilizar un adverbio de, de manera, un adverbio de manera, ¿cómo nos quedaría este, esa palabra si lo convertimos a un adverbio? El adjetivo si lo convertimos a un adverbio. Tenemos rápido. Entonces tendríamos que... Son las palabras que terminan en ente. Vale, les doy ejemplos. En español son aquellas palabras como rápidamente, fácilmente, estupendamente, maravillosamente. Eh, ¿Qué otras podemos pensar? Honestamente. Honestamente, ok. Sinceramente. Exactamente. Vale, tenemos, tenemos, la, tenemos la idea en español. Ahora, en inglés es algo similar. Lo único que en estos terminan en LI. ¿Sí? Eh, si nosotros lo vemos de esta manera, tomamos una, un adjetivo. Eh, yo ponía el ejemplo de rápido. ¿Sí? Tengo la, el adjetivo rápido. Lo quiero convertir en un adverbio de manera. Yo voy a decir rápidamente. ¿Sí? Si utilizo honesto, voy a decir honestamente. Eh, si por ejemplo este, yo utilizo eh, la palabra especial entonces eh, voy convirtiendo ¿verdad? especialmente o, o en sí, en sí, en sí el, el juego de palabras en sí este, de, de adjetivos al ver ahora en inglés es un poquito similar a diferencia que el, el final o el, el sufijo de la palabra no es mente, sino L, eh, L, Y, ¿sí? La L y la Y. Creo que, no sé si tendré por aquí otra flashcard. No sé si la tenga por acá. Ah, muy probablemente no. Teacher, usually. Is... Usually, ok. Es un, es un adverbio de, de, de manera. Aquí tengo una flashcard. Vean esto. Este es cuando nosotros utilizamos este, un verbo más un adverbio. Um, tenemos una oración. The ballerina, perdón, the ballerina dances beautifully. ¿Ok? En español, ¿qué queremos decir? The ballerina dances beautifully. En español sería... Hermosamente. Ajá. Hermosamente. Hermosamente. Ok. Baila hermosamente. Esa sería como, como la, la, la idea en sí este de, de un adverbio de manera. Ahora, eso es, esa es una categoría. 
¿sí? De adverbios, los que terminan en LY. Eh, existe otra categoría que son los adverbios, los adverbios de tiempo. ¿Saben cuáles son los adverbios de tiempo? Mm. ¿Sí? Temporalmente. Um, pero no sé cómo se dice. Mensualmente. Mensualmente. Ah, ah exacto. Vaya, a, ojo, ojo, sí. que ahorita estamos confundiendo los adverbios de, de, de manera. Esos son los que terminan en mente, los adverbios de manera. Hay adverbios que se los conocen como adverbios de tiempo y estos usualmente, eh, sí, algunos terminan en LG, eh, pero se utilizan de una manera muy diferente. Um, tenemos una lista por ahí, quiero, se las quiero compartir. Se las voy a, se las voy a compartir aquí. Y quiero que veamos los primeros tres adverbios de esa lista. Always, already, and annually. Always. ¿Qué significa always? Siempre. Siempre. Already. Ya. Ya. And annually. Anualmente. Anualmente. Before. Antes. Ok, etcétera, etcétera. Ahí tenemos la lista de nosotros. Vaya, estos eh, adverbios de tiempo responden a la pregunta ¿cuándo? ¿Sí? ¿Cuándo X acción se llevó a cabo? ¿O cuándo X acción se lleva a cabo? En sí. Tenemos una pequeña definición ahí. It says the adverse of uh, time answer the questions when. It tells us when an action happened beside how long. How often, most important adverse of time. Well, there we have the, 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 the adverse of time. Well, the list of the adverse of time. Uh, that we can Teacher, just practice. I Tell have me. a question. Tell me, sir. What's your question? With, with sometimes word, uh, why don't use L, G? No, L, Y. El right. Ah, why? Well, because there is like an specific list for, for this eh, adverse. Ah, hay como, este, digamos, dentro de los, de los adverbios de tiempo, este, no todos van a terminar en LG porque eh, no todos responden a, exactamente a la, a la pregunta de cuándo una acción se, se, lleva, se lleva a cabo. Eh, gramaticalmente sería incorrecto decir simplemente, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, por eso existe como, como una lista de los adverbios que se pueden utilizar en inglés. Eh, por ejemplo, si yo le pregunto, eh, ¿cuántos días a la semana este, asisten ustedes a clase? Y el adverbio que van a utilizar es siempre. ¿Qué preguntas están, eh, están respondiendo ustedes? Ah, el cuándo eh, o, o, o la cantidad de veces. ¿Sí? Ahora, eh, en una oración, ¿cómo funciona esto? Veámoslo este, eh, en una oración. I'll, I always eh, do my homework. I always do my homework. Si yo utilizo la oración, yo siempre hago mi tarea, yo estoy indicando eh, la cantidad de veces. ¿sí? La cantidad de veces sería el 100%. ¿Sí? Um, si yo, por ejemplo, utilizo el sometimes dentro de la oración y digo, yo algunas veces hago mi tarea, ¿a qué porcentaje creen que corresponde ese algunas veces? ¿Será el 100%? ¿Será el 0%? ¿Será, será como el 50%, ¿verdad? Ah, algunas veces lo hago, otras veces no. Entonces, eh, dentro de eso, de esa categoría de los adverbios de tiempo, a, a nosotros nos está indicando el, el, el cuándo yo realizo X acción. Si lo realizo siempre, si lo realizo algunas veces, si nunca lo realizo. ¿Cómo se dice nunca en, en, en inglés? Never. Never. Ok, never. I never do my homework. So, when I use it like that. <laughs> 
Eh, otras veces, pues, eh, si queremos como ir variando, hay, hay otra infinidad, pues, hay una lista en sí de los adverbios que se pueden utilizar, los adverbios de tiempo que se pueden utilizar dentro de una oración. Pero todos ellos van a responder la pregunta de cuándo. X acción se lleva a cabo o, X, o cuándo X acción pasó o pasa. ¿Sí? El cuándo. Esa va a ser nuestra palabra clave. ¿De acuerdo? Bien. Bien. Sí, dígame, Fernando. Eh, no, no, I, I understand the explanation. Okay, okay, good, good. So, uh, do you understand my explanation? Uh, is it good? Because uh, I, I like it that you can uh, ask questions related to these topics because um, before going through the topic that we're going to be discussing there in the platform, so there are some things that probably we didn't manage in, in that way we, we know some uh, some uses of X words or X, uh, uh, what I say, it, in this case, adverbs, uh, uh, structures, rules. So, uh, and then we can uh, have a good uh, comprehension about the, the topics that, that we develop there. Bien, de momento, solo nos quedan dos minutitos. Quiero ver si puedo mostrarles algo por aquí. Aquí nos vamos a encontrar. Una, una explicación. Uh, sí, déjenme mostrarles por acá. Un segundito. Adverbial clauses of time. A subordinating conjunction joins the verb. Now, school is a subordinated or the is okay to say since they got a comma if the subordinating conjunction is a subordinating conjunction or clause of time. I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. Stay around and listen to the explanation and follow. Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? Okay, here. <laughs> This is what I, what I want you to focus on because you're gonna, gonna have, um, you're going to watch this video um, tomorrow before the class because you're gonna tell me What is an adverbial class of time? You're going to uh, research information about this. You're going to um, uh, look for uh, what is an adverbial class of time? How this adverbial class of time is, is uh, created. Vamos eh, a, a llevar esa pequeña esa tarea. ¿sí? Vamos a investigar qué es una... Eh, cláusula de tiempo este y bueno perdón la, la pregunta qué es este un adverbial class of time eh, y vamos a buscar la estructura ya la tenemos aquí en el video si gustan pues la, la toman es, toman nota de ello y, y luego me, me explican a mí cómo se utiliza eh, vamos a investigar cómo se forma una oración de este tipo ¿Sí? Cláusulas eh, adverbiales de tiempo. Esa va a ser nuestra tarea. No busquen información tan extensa, porque nosotros lo vamos a trabajar el día de mañana. ¿Sí? Solamente necesito que nos enfoquemos en eso. ¿Qué es? Para que lo, ponga, lo podamos este, comprender un poco mejor el día de mañana. ¿Sí? Yo les voy a preguntar cuándo iniciemos la videoconferencia. Y nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí. ¿Sí? No sé si tienen preguntas de momento. No, ¿Para qué sirve? No, teacher, es clear ¿Qué? for me. Una cláusula adverbial de tiempo. Sí. ¿Qué es una cláusula adverbial de tiempo? Sí. Y la, la estructura. Eso es lo que van a buscar. Es bastante sencillo lo que van a hacer. Si gustan, pues se pueden tomar después de la videoconferencia unos cinco minutitos y lo investigan y ya tienen la tarea. Bien, entonces, si no hay más preguntas, este, eh, eso sería todo por ahora, lastimosamente, pues el tiempo corre y ya se nos fue una hora. Entonces, eh, nos quedaríamos pendiente con el tema y lo trabajaríamos eh, tomorrow. So, um, 
see you tomorrow, guys. Uh, remember, eight o'clock. And um, try to work on the exercises that you have on the platform. Okay? See. Bye-bye. Good night. 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 Good